Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. So for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Akshada Babur. Um, I study data analytics at Northeastern University and I started in fall 21 so I still have like a year to go. Um, and today's video is going to be all about my co-op experience and I'm going to talk about the co-op process in Northeastern and how it actually works. So I've added timestamps in the description below and feel free, free to skip to the part that you like. So let's start with what actually is a co-op. So co-op is like, um, you know, let's compare it with an internship. So an internship is like a three month thing, whereas co-op can be a three month, four month or a six month thing. Um, and when you're in a co-op, you're actually like a full time employee in that company. So and because you have a lot of time with you, the project that you will get will be a really nice project. So the amount of experience and exposure is going to be really high as compared to that of an internship then uh, most of the co-ops are paid so if you get a paid co-op uh, you will earn a lot and you can really pay for your semester and you can also um, cover your living some amount of living expenses uh, with the money that you get during the co-op and the chances of being hired as a full-time employee after the co-op increases considerably so yeah i would say these are the advantages of doing a co-op uh, now in northeastern there are different colleges so there is College of Engineering and then there is CPS and then there is Corey College. So all the data analytics students belong to the College of Engineering. So I uh, am in the College of Engineering and for COE students, you're allowed to do only a, like either an internship or either a co-op. You cannot do both an internship and a co-op. Um, so when I started with my, okay, let's actually let's start with when did I start with the internship search process? So when I arrived in the United States, um, I had seen a lot of videos. So I used to follow UDJ and Parth and I used to see all of their videos. And I knew that you have to start applying for the internships as soon as you land in the United States. But in Northeastern, there is a co-op uh, uh, course. So you have to do this course uh, and only then you will get a co-op advisor. And once your co-op advisor approves, only after that you can start your applications for internships and co-ops and you can start using any works. So when I arrived, I started with my co-op course and we were instructed that we cannot start um, applying uh, for internships or anything. Um, and yes, we did not have access to any works, but I, I did have LinkedIn, uh, but I did not start with my applications from LinkedIn either. Um, because uh, I I just thought that if they understand that I am applying from outside, um, then they might just, you know, not let me do a co-op. Um, so I just did not start with my applications. Um, and not only that, but there was this fear in my mind that I'm not ready. I'm not yet ready to start with my applications. Um, I felt that if I apply to some company, I'm just going to get rejected. Or let's say even if I get an interview, then what am I going to say in that interview? Because I just don't know anything. That's what my mindset was when I arrived and I just kept procrastinating it. I was like, okay, I'll start next month. I'll start next month. So this is what I kept doing. And you know, in a flash semester one was done. And then uh, it was already December. I went to New York and everything and I started to hear that so many students from my batches had already um, got internship offers in really nice companies and then that's when I was like okay now we have to do something so I started working on my resume so I started working on my resume in December so I spent uh, like to end of November as well so end of November December and half of January yeah I spent um, at least two months over my resume what I did is uh, so during the co-op class we were thought about how the resume format should be and just how you should write your cover letter and what type of keywords uh, should you be using and stuff like that so then according to that I shaped my resume and then I sent it to so many people on LinkedIn um and not not only on linkedin but i also contacted a lot of my seniors who were on the co-ops uh, i shared my resume with them and just got feedback about um what things i need to change 
and once it was like all set up that's when i started my application so i started my application in mid jan mid jan jan 22 that's when i started my application and i already knew that i am very late um but i started applying and what my seniors told me was that in a day you have to put in 15 applications so that uh, that was my target that i have to apply to at least 15 companies uh in a day during the start i was only able to apply like five or four in a day uh, because i used to change my resume according to the job description uh i used to try to put similar keywords during that time but uh after after like a month i just stopped changing my resume so you know i i did not make a lot of changes when making applications uh the only changes that i made was in the skill section like if the job description had a particular skill that i knew and it was not there in the resume so i just added that in the resume that's the only change that i made uh and then i just started applying to like 20 companies in a day and in about a period of 1.5 months my co-op advisor asked me to not apply from any works because i had put in 170 applications from any works so he was like okay this is too much and you have to stop just try applying from linkedin and i did not get a single interview call it was 1.5 months and i was i was really anxious and you know when you are in northeastern it's like everyone around you is getting a co-op and everyone is Everyone is in the same boat, but there are many people who are getting co-ops, who are getting interview offers. So then when they tell you that, okay, I got this interview from this company and it freaks you out. It makes you think that, okay, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? Why am I not getting any interviews? What's happening? And it just makes you really anxious and it creates a pressure on you. You know, you just start doubting yourself. You start doubting everything that you're doing you even start thinking whether it was the right decision to come uh, to the united states so that's what was happening but um, keeping that aside i was still doing all the applications and everything and i was not getting any interview calls and then it was two months and then suddenly um, i was one time in a class with my friends and i opened my email and i had the interview offer from amazon and i was so happy i was so happy just to get that interview i was really happy uh, then i had two weeks to prepare for the interview so i just prepared and everything uh, and even when i got the interview everyone was telling me that you are not going to go through with that interview because uh, everyone's been getting these emails and then when you re to reach to the point of interview they cancel the interview so that's what that's what like my friends were telling me and i was um I didn't even know like if that interview is actually going to happen or not uh, but I still prepared for it and yes the interview did happen and um, so after the interview um, it was not a very nice interview for me uh, because so this interview was divided into like two rounds uh, 45 minutes each and the first round was like a uh, conceptual round where they asked me conceptual questions related to data warehousing data engineering sql python and the second round was a 45 minute round where 30 minutes was coding which involved both python coding and sql coding and 30 minute was uh, behavioral questions based on amazon lps uh and there was one python question which was like super easy but at that point i was really not able to remember the one syntax because of which i was not able to solve it entirely but i explained my uh like i explained how i'm going to solve it to the interviewer um in the interview and after the interview i was like i'm not going to get this position because i was not able to solve that problem so i just you know i was disappointed and i left it and then i moved on and i started applying to other companies and it had been like four weeks um and then after four weeks i got that interview offer uh sorry i got um the offer for the internship uh for this and i was really happy so obviously it felt like i was relieved finally i got something um and then i went to my advisor with this internship that i got this internship and i want to accept it uh and it was also related to data engineering uh but my advisor was like no you cannot accept it and i was like what 
<laughs> why so he told me that uh, i have to be working for 55 days without any holidays uh, and that's when he will let me accept it or i would need to change the dates oh no no yeah he told me that i need to change the date so there was some problem with my dates because the internship was going on 16th september so he said that you cannot uh, like do this internship because the classes start on 7th september uh, so i asked them about changing the date but the company was saying that in order to change the date you have to first accept the offer and then you will uh, get a survey where you can change the date so i was trying to convince this to my co-op advisor and thankfully um, he was convinced uh, so i accepted the offer and the dates and everything were changed um, it all worked out pretty well but after i accepted the offer the next day i got an interview from goldman sachs and i was happy again because i got the interview but then I knew it that even if I gave the interview, even if I got the offer, nothing could be done because um, it's like once you get an offer, once you accept it, that's it. It's done. You cannot do anything about it. So then and at that point, I was just too tired of giving applications and preparing for the interview that I decided to not go forward with the interview for Goldman Sachs. And I regret it to this day because I think that it would have been a good experience just giving the interview, getting to know how the interview would actually be. Uh, but anyway, I did not give that interview. And um, so this was how it all happened. Um, like my experience of getting an internship. So now let's talk about the co-op class. So does the co-op class actually help? So the co-op class is like a one credit class and for College of Engineering student, it's a paid class. So you have to pay uh, the credit fee for one credit for this class. But I think for students from Cori College of Engineering, uh, it's free for them and it's online. So I had paid for this class and this class is basically like uh, they are going to talk about the format of the resume, format of their cover letter, how you should actually write your resume, uh, what kind of words should you be using, you how you have to quantify every bullet point. Uh, there's also sessions where they teach you how to build your elevator pitch, uh, just how to be professional in the industry. So basically it is everything related to uh, securing a co-op and uh, professional practices to follow after you secure a co-op so the class was related to that do i feel is it worth the amount that i paid for it i don't i really don't think it is worth because i can get the information from youtube or i can get the same information from the co-op advisor after i am assigned the co-op advisor so i really do not understand the point of the co-op class uh, but keeping that aside i think this co-op class really um help me shape my resume so during the first semester i was not doing much but because of the co-op class i was at least at least uh, like all the assignments of the co-op class were like to complete your resume uh do a SWOT analysis of yourself so at least i was doing that during the first semester because of this class if if i wouldn't have had enrolled in this co-op class i wouldn't do that in the first semester so i think that's fine but still i i i don't know i don't think it's worth one credit but yeah whatever uh then yeah so this this is my review with the co-op class um and i would really appreciate it if this class would have been online like the Cori students have it so they just have this class online and they have to complete it in their own convenience uh and once they complete it they will be assigned with a co-op advisor so now um the next thing is just clarifying some points about the co-op process at Northeastern University. So when I was in India, I used to think that um, Northeastern, so basically the way Northeastern is adver advertised is with the co-op program. So I used to think that coming in Northeastern is like, you know, a guarantee to get a co-op. But I realized that it's not like that. Um, the reason is that Northeastern has a website and new works and yes, they have like, good jobs posted on a new works um they have tie-ups with some startup i wouldn't say tie-ups but a lot of startups uh, around boston uh they post their jobs in northeastern and new works and then there is a talent connect fair where people from the startup um sorry recruiters from the startup 
um, come and then they give you information about the company and you have a chance where you can pitch yourself to them that's all good but the bad size of northeastern is so much it's like last year in is uh, i think it was a batch of around 500 students and for da it was around 300 something and the any work has around let's say maximum of 300 positions so how are so many students going to get co-ops from like so little positions on any works right so everyone does not get a co-op like you keep applying and uh, you think that it is going to be comparatively easier but it is not it is really not easier to get a co-op um and i did not get a single interview from any works um and i did apply to every position that was available so but yes it does differ like it does differ like it, it depends on your resume and your applications and the time of your application also depends um all that is right but still if you are someone in india and you're thinking that i'm going to go to northeastern because northeastern has this co-op program and it will be easier for me to get a co-op just know that it is not going to be easier because the number the batch intake is really high and this year in fall 22 the batch size is even higher and so people from my batch who did not get a co-op are going to look for co-ops and the people from the coming batch are also going to look for co-ops and then there are students who came in spring and they are also going to look for co-ops and then there is just the one in your work website and only those 200 300 job postings that are available on any works and i also compared handshake and new works so almost all of the jobs were similar but except for the few startups that i said so yeah they were like extra and new works uh, but i applied from everywhere i applied from linkedin company websites any works everywhere uh yeah i did not use handshake because like i said most of the jobs um, were similar but this is it and um it's not like um, only Northeastern students can do co-ops. Uh, this might be the case for undergraduate students, but for graduate students, there are many other universities that allow you to do co-ops. Uh, and because they do not advertise it as much, uh, so I believe that their intake might be lower. So if you get these universities that allow you to do co-ops and you can just prefer those. Um, so like when I went to my internship in San Diego, um i i met a girl and she was doing an internship and she extended this internship as a co-op so she was working on a co-op part-time while pursuing her studies and she was from stsu so i thought that only northeastern is the one giving co-ops but that's not the case there are many other universities that allow graduate students to do co-ops so you can uh, mail these universities and talk to them about uh, such things and just um, get to know if they will let you do a co-op or not i talked so much about a co-op uh, obviously you're going to ask me why did you do an internship if you wanted to do a co-op so like i said that i was really getting anxious um, and when i got the internship offer i was like i might not even get another interview i might not even get a co-op and once this offer is gone it's just gone i cannot go back to it and uh, then again it was from amazon um the position the position was really nice i was interested in the position and also the company is nice uh the pay was really nice so i thought that you know it's a good thing to go for this internship and then if i would do the internship my graduation would not be extended so i would complete the internship come back uh study for a year and then maybe i can join back as a full-time employee with amazon uh so that's what i thought and that's the reason why i went with the internship uh and to be honest it was not like a situation where i had like 10 offers or 5 offers and then i can just take one you know i was like this is my only option so that's what happened but i know many other people who had so many interview offers and um, they had so many offers uh interview offers and then uh, like they turned into job offers and then they were like confused which one to choose and which one not to um, I tried to get their resume because I wanted to compare what is the difference between their resume and my resume and then make a video about it but unfortunately I did not get any of the resume from these people um, 
but yeah i think it totally depends uh, on the individual and if you are a student in india thinking about coming to northeastern considering the co-op program just know the reality that getting in northeastern does not guarantee you a co-op and they do mention it clearly on the website which we ignore but yes it it is not guaranteed that you'll get a co-op if you come to northeastern you have to work hard for yourself you have to put in applications and keep changing your resume talk to people uh network with people get referrals so it depends on individual to individual so i think that's what i wanted to convey in this video i hope you guys have liked this this was like just a real honest opinion about co-ops and how the process actually is um if you have any questions please feel free to comment below the video or uh, message me on instagram in my next video bye bye